Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to our, well, this is Rotary Craft and Reactor Craft tutorial episode. Um, there's nothing, we're not building anything new today, we're not making uh, any blocks or anything, but we are taking a look at a couple of things that I wanted to talk about. First, after our soil hydrator video, I wanted to see how quickly I could get crops to grow using the new soil uh, hydrator and then adding down a ground sprinkler. Uh, and as you can see, it, it, they grow pretty quick. You can see the fans harvesting them. They're growing real quick. And uh, you would only need a pump in order to power this. Depending on how far away your water source is, depends on how much power you'd need to run this ground sprinkler. Like if I was going to pump water up from that river, it would probably, uh, probably take a decent amount of power to do that. I've also set up a fertilizer right here, so if I crank that on, I should be able to get this stuff to grow even quicker. We've got a stack of bone meal in there. You can see the crops have the little green diamonds on them. So that should grow... Those are growing pretty fast. Now, I also wanted to, and I forgot to grab one, take a look at a thing that you can do with these fans. And I'll also need myself an angular transducer. So if we look at these fans, we can see that there's the like a, a 3x3 white cube around it, and also the 1x1 uh, one, one blue uh, one down the center. We can also see it doesn't look like these ones on the edges are actually getting blown away, these uh, things. If we right click with the dif uh, diffuser, which is a crafting component for some other things, it changes the way the fan looks and it's, it allows it to now blow things on the, uh, the edges, the 3x3, three three, full 3 area. So if we hit it with the transducer now, that little dark blue 1-1 one one area is gone and now that 3-3 three three area appears slightly blue shaded. However, it does say that uh, applying the diffuser makes the fan 50% less efficient. Now, I'm not sure if that means that it takes twice as much power because we're putting the same amount of power into it and it's still harvesting the crops even at the furthest range. So that's not an issue. Uh, it is blowing the crops far slower than on the left. Well, uh, at the end, this is basically the edge of the range. This one appears to be shooting them off quite a bit further, even though that's also the end of the range. You can see that the, the range on this fan with the same amount of power is the same as the other range with the same amount of power. However, if we walk and uh, try and push ourselves against this fan and this fan, and it's about the same again. So I'm not sure what it means about 50% more efficient, less efficient, but whatever, I'm not sure. So, uh, since we've been talking, it's only been a couple of minutes, I currently have a stack uh, of uh, wheat that this has been producing. Almost a stack and a half. Pretty good. We've used up a bit of bone meal for the fertilizer, but you don't even need the fertilizer. It, it, it produces quite quickly even without the fertilizer. I just added it for an extra boost. But uh, even without the fertilizer, a ground sprinkler plus soil hydrator grows pretty quick. It grows crops pretty quickly. I like it. So that's that. Uh, just a little thing to try out. Another thing I tried out, eh, we're going to go into the nether. Mm -hmm. I was talking about putting a thorium reactor in the nether. Because thorium reactor has to be, um, obviously has to be uh, preheated. So I thought, hey, well, what if we could build a thorium reactor in the nether? That's where you get the uh, working fluid for it anyway. Seems like a decent idea. Unfortunately, uh, Reka is, is smarties and thought of that. Thorium fuel canister. So unfortunately, it, if you put thorium fuel into a reservoir in the nether, it explodes. Just like jet fuel. So, unfortunately, no. <laughs> uh, doesn't look like you can run a thorium reactor in the nether because it's fuel. 
uh, just explodes as soon as it comes as soon as it enters the nether it explodes um, bit of a downer yeah I'll see if I can get it to work maybe maybe it won't explode if it's in the, 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 the fuel lines rather than a reservoir uh, I don't know but it is not looking good for nether thorium reactors as a thing it's not looking good so we'll come back see what our farms got for us already we've got two stacks okay so now this monstrosity over here so the high temperature gas reactor uh, we talked about this back in the old reactor craft series uh, it's changed a decent amount yeah this is still slowly going up it's crazy very slowly so back in uh, the last time we talked about this thing I had built a pebble bed reactor that looked like this that could run a uh, turbine low pressure turbine at full power uh, and it doesn't work anymore people have been commenting on that video that hey this doesn't work hey this doesn't work that is not the way that you build a pebble bed reactor no 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 you now build a pebble bed reactor like this carbon dioxide heat exchanger in the middle and four pebble bed reactor cores around it yeah so that's the way that you uh, place put this together. Here we have an eight tall one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have an eight tall uh, pebble bed reactor, and it is producing enough. Uh, it's producing hot carbon dioxide gas very, very quickly. Um, every time it hits 800 plus, to, and, it's, and it makes more, it cools itself down but it cools itself down to 690 something and it goes back up very very quickly um, I'm wondering if you add enough if you can keep it above 800 it doesn't seem to be necessary though it's uh, it, it's still it's keeping a constant amount of hot carbon dioxide in here right around it never drops below 3 something I've got two heat exchangers um, running, some, running, the, running this two of them I don't know if I can run more. I haven't tried yet. And off these two, I am currently running six uh, boilers. This is the warmest one. And then over here, we have uh, one boiler touching. Now, I, I, I could have set this up better. Uh, if I put the heat exchanger here, I could have had uh, two of these touching, but it doesn't seem to matter any. Because um, what we've ended up with with our eight tall pebble bed reactor is the ability to run eight low pressure turbines. It's running eight low pressure turbines at max power on water and if we look at the steam line we are still actually increasing the amount of steam that we have. It's so slow I'm pretty sure if I add another uh, turbine it will uh, start decreasing um, but of course we could always find that out Let's, uh, let's see if that would indeed be the case. One, two, three, four, five. Doesn't hit anything. And then a, uh, I just like to stick a dynamometer on these just so that I can tell when it's full power. Not that it matters. We're just trying to see if it will actually work. And then we need the uh, steam grate up there. So now we are running six of these off of our high temperature gas reactor and our goal here is to see if the steam amount goes up or down well it does appear like the steam amount is still on the up nineteen eighty two nineteen seven oh no nineteen seventy nine nineteen seventy eight okay so no you can run eight you can run eight high te uh, steam turbines off of an eight tall high temperature gas reactor. Um, of course, with the rate at which it's going down, the the ninth uh, turbine will run for quite a long time on this backlog of steam. So it's not a bad idea to build another one. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, it's not a bad idea to build nine. Um, because over time it's going to store up a backlog, it's going to store up an excess of steam, and then 
the ninth one can run off of the excess and give you more power for a while until it gets down to like uh, you know until it gets down to however low you want it to be and then uh, you can shut it off that one off so that's my uh, new pebble bed reactor the high temperature gas reactor so this is how you set it up uh, just to recap it's a uh, carbon dioxide heat exchangers in the center and surround that with four of the pebble bed reactor cores now I am going to experiment with um, this sort of a setup and see how how this goes. Um, I don't think this would be efficient enough because it, it, you know this last one over here only has one of its own. But we'll see. I'll test it out and I'll get back to you guys. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed now this recap of the high temperature gas reactor. Honestly. Now, it does produce de uh, pretty good power. Unfor the problem with this is the expense. It it's expensive to build it. And the reason it's expensive to build is because the pebble bed reactor cores require hoppers, more steel, and fuel cores. Now, the fuel core requires steel, hopper, and fuel canisters. Now, to make it, because there's four on each layer, in order to make uh, uh, an eight tall stack, you know, eight, eight, eight times four is uh, 32. So, you're going to need 32 of these pellet bed reactor cores, which means 32 fuel cores, which means uh, 64 fuel canisters, which each require uh, four of our CIA alloy. So a uh, pellet bed reactor of this size is a, uh, a decent investment in resource to build the uh, to build these uh, reactor cores. However, the, be the benefit is that as long as uh, your cooling system doesn't break down, uh, you never have to worry about it going uh, critical and exploding. And even if this does overheat, it'll just melt into lava, which is bad, but not, you know, there's no radiation involved. And you can run eight uh, turbines indefinitely, all the time, as long as you get the fuel for it. And you can even run a ninth one um, off of your backlog of steam. So, nice. That is our rehashed look now at the pebble bed reactor. So, uh, if you don't know how to build these, now you do. Remember that you uh, you get the hot CO2 out of the top of the exchanger, and you pipe in the uh, uh, not hot CO2 into the bottom of the exchanger of the uh, not exchanger of the um, heat exchanger. No, the carbon dioxide heat exchanger is what it's called. That is what it's called. Yep, hot at the top, cold in the bottom. Now let's go back to our farm and uh, see what it's given us since we've been over there. Dang, quite a lot. Uh, even with our fertilizer turned off. So as you can see, soil hydrator plus ground sprinkler. Very effective. I'm definitely going to be uh, implementing this at some point uh, in my farm once I get a water supply set up. Very nice. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode, looking at uh, you know a couple of things here and there. Um, one thing that I'm, I'm not 100% sure on is how much more steam than one of these the high pressure gas turbine needs i know i knew it at some point if it's eight times more we could run a high temperature we could run a high pressure turbine off this but if it's uh more than that if it's 12 or 16 times more we would need two of these but anyway i'm going to be experimenting more with the high with the uh, pole bed reactor so uh, i'll let you know what i find out anyway stay tuned for future episodes i'm sentinel h and i'm signing out <laughs>